This is Dave with Fry and Bacon Studios and another game salad tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Tizen emulator to be able to test and look at your applications. Now, one of the first things that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and bring up the terminal because we really we need to see if our machine can handle the x86 environment virtual machine which is what the Tizen emulator runs in. Now you're gonna need to do a Google search and see if your Mac is compatible with its ch chip version of the Intel chip that it can run the x86 virtual machine so you can just do like a quick search that says you know Macs that support running an x86 virtual machine and because that's the only way it'll run the Amazon um, emulator will run an x86 or an ADM um, but the uh, the Tizen will only run in the x86 so now what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and check our machine to make sure that uh, that we can run um, that we have the x86 uh, stuff and in software installed installed so that um, it can run and so we're going to just type you're going to type these same commands that I have in here into your terminal and then you're going to hit enter and if you get this response then you have the software installed to run x86 virtual machine and uh, if you don't have it installed what you need to do is go to my video that I just made on the Amazon emulator and you need to install all the stuff for the Amazon emulator and what that will do is it will load um, into your um, app, you know, into your system the uh, x86 stuff and you just make sure that stuff's installed and then you'll be good to go on that so we're good to run x86 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and come over here now and we're gonna go into the Tizen SDK I'm going to go into the tools folder and then we're going to go into the emulator folder and then we're going to go into this bin folder here and this is we're going to find the emulator manager and we're going to and start the emulator and um, you can see that I had one already set up so I'm going to add a new one because I want to I want to change the resolution on this um, so let's just go ahead and do a new one and I'll call this iPhone because I'm gonna try to do something or a close resolution to the iPhone here and uh, we're just gonna leave everything else uh, set up the way it is and then we're gonna hit confirm and so we've got it uh, set up here and when you want to start it you just come down to this little play arrow type here and this is gonna launch the emulator so we're gonna go ahead and launch it And it takes a minute to start up so we've got the emulator here and we can go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and close this stuff out and one of the first things that you're gonna know is you've got these buttons over here you can toggle this on and off these are the basic buttons I guess that are gonna be on a device I guess the external buttons I would would say I'm gonna guess that these are now one of the interesting things about these buttons is that um, to be able to use them um, I noticed that you actually have to right click on them to get them to work so um, you know you should be aware of that when you're setting it up And let's see you've got to turn the power button on on this thing it took a minute last time to start up and there we go and so now we're in the uh, we're in the Tizen uh, emulator and so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to go need to go back into the terminal. Let's just pull this off to the side. 
One of the things that I really do recommend is that you look up some, because a lot of these things Game Salad's doing now seems to be working out of the terminal, especially with some of these other uh, OSs. Um, so it's probably be a good idea to do a little research on Unix commands as far as changing directories and doing some different stuff. It's Unix is pretty basic to work around with learning, you know, why you put dots in here and what what file paths are and stuff. So I'd recommend reading up a little bit on some of the basic definitions and some of the basic uh, Unix stuff. Um, I guess it'll make your life a little bit easier and you'll kind of be able to grasp uh, what's going on with everything. So now one of the next things that we're going to do is we need to go ahead and we need to check the um, the ADB bridge. We need to get it started going on the emulator, or they call it the SDB bridge. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this section of code that I have here. And what this is going to do is, is um, this is going to force us into the directory where the SDB is. Um, and it's kind of like the ADB bridge in, in the Android uh, stuff. This is what connects and runs a little server in the background that is going to allow us to sideload it. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. And then we're also going to put, we're going to type in devices. And what this is going to do is it's going to, um, it's going to find the device to make sure that we have a connection through the, uh, the, uh, the SDB bridge. So you can see that it wasn't running and so now it's running and um, you can see that it's giving me the emulator uh, telling me my emulator number device what I named it iPhone and and that were attached and it started. So now that we've done that now we can we can think about um, installing the um, we're gonna go ahead and install our widget we're gonna go ahead and sideload it so what I want you to do is you probably uh, it's a little tricky in the terminal um, because of the way this bridge seems to work it automatically usually I would do the drag and drop method uh, for file pass into the terminal but I found with the um, with the Tizen toolkit um, it actually puts the beginning part of the file path in there and so it screws it up because it ends up being a double file path as far as the first level so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to leave this we're going to go ahead and leave this um, first part in here um, and we're going to just delete it so in other words what we end up with is if I do the straight drag and drop I'll show you what that looks like usually what I would do is I would go in and I would put in this first part here um, set up like this which is the basic uh, commands to get us into the right directory and then what I would do is I would come in here like I can do with Android and I would go into my workspace folder which is where our widget our compiled widget is and I would take this I would just drag it into the terminal space and it, it's going to give me the file path automatically so I don't have to uh, I don't have to uh, type in all of it and find all the stuff but I found that when I hit it see it doubles it like this so I found that to be an issue so what I did was I went in and I, I copy and pasted this first part here and then I went in here and I inserted that into this spot so you could you know copy it up to the uh, first forward slash there in the file path after your users and your uh, root directory and just copy this part so what I did was I just went and copied that part and then brought it into a text editor and added it into this section here so I could have the complete uh, uh, code that I needed to be able to sideload my app and this is the basic code that that you need to do that so we're gonna go ahead sorry about that so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy and paste this so this is basically gonna be these first sections of commands and I'll explain to you a little bit what this does 
what this does is it's going to put us in a in this particular directory so the first place we need to be is in the toolkit of the Tizen SDK so we're going from we're going from our 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 everything before this is um, our basic root at our user uh, identity so we're at root here and then we're going to the into the Tizen SDK folder and then we need to get into the tools folder and then we need to access the SBD code which is you'll see it as a little terminal setup in there and so this is going to bring us basically up to the S SDB and then we can put a command into it after that so there's a bunch of different kinds of commands you can add after the S SDB but we need to be in this so that when we we, we know what we're what com where the commands are going and then after that we're gonna so we're saying you know telling the SDB install and then we're telling it where our widget is so we're saying hey install this widget and this is the file path where it is root okay workspace pocket and I guess just showed you it fills in the other stuff so you just want the last half of this this section here so we're gonna just go ahead and copy and paste that and then we'll just paste it into the terminal and it takes a minute and you'll see it pushed it into the device and it's stalling it now now you want to make sure you and you do the one that you published I know that the game salad um, directions say to use the unsigned one that's got to be a mistake because I couldn't get the unsigned one to install um, the, I kept getting errors on these uh, these key install stuff the key validation so you do need to use a, a signed uh, compiled final version of your widget don't use the one that um, you download straight from game salad so um, now we're gonna go ahead and let's go to the terminal uh, emulator and if, and if you right click on anything in here you can do different stuff you can scale it up so I guess we can scale it up one size here um, you can um, you can rotate it so pockets in landscape so we'll go ahead and go in landscape um, there's some other advanced stuff you can take a screenshot host keyboard shell um, all that different stuff you can do you get your volume buttons remember this is all right clicked so you can test the uh, back button here uh, in your code uh, by using that to make sure it works so I'm just gonna go ahead and launch pocket and it's letterboxing for me I'm I guess maybe my cam the camera controls or camera adjustments aren't really uh, giving me all that much although the screen is bigger as you saw here it's it's 800 so that does make sense because I'm set up for the 500 so let's just go ahead and skip this and t touch and everything is working but I can see I'm gonna have to play with my aspect ratios in here my camera adjustments but now that I know that the basic sizes of the that the emulators targeting um, I can go in and make those camera adjustments and whatnot so I'm just gonna go ahead and test my back button here you know normal emulator runs kinda slow you're not gonna get a real performance value out of it because it is a virtual machine um, so let's see how my back button works and it works I put the uh, code in there for the back button stuff that you're gonna find on the game salad forum so everything's looking good so far um, I got everything running you know I haven't been through and tested the game in it but I want to get the, the screen ratios right and all that stuff and uh, so anyways I hope this helps you get running on the virtual machine and and get going with checking your Tizen system out and loading everything so anyways, this is Dave with Fry and Bacon Studios. I'll see you in the next video.